Rebuilding a Tangy Model Steam Engine, Part 7. How to make the new piston. Here I'm cleaning up the gland nut ready to refit it. First of all, here's a top tip. Whenever you refit nuts or bolts using a socket like this, there's always a problem that the nut or bolt goes right down inside the socket. But if you pack the socket with a piece of paper, like you've just seen me do, this makes it much easier to engage the thread. Alignment is almost immediate and the gland nut is now in place. I'm screwing the gland nut in as far as possible and then backing it off and this is to accurately simulate the position it's going to be in when the gland is packed. The next thing I need to know is what is the diameter of the piston. So I'm using my digital caliper for this. Using my Boxford lathe I'm going to thread the other end of the piston rod. Like I did with the end of the piston rod that fits into the crosshead I'm reducing the diameter slightly and I'm going to thread it 4BA. After applying some lubricating oil I'm going to thread the end using a die which is already fitted to one of my die holders. I made up this system a while back and I produced a video showing what it's all about. By using these very cheap, easily replaced die holders in an adapter it means I can always have my dies pre-loaded so I just reach on the shelf for the adapter and thread away. I don't have to mess about putting dies in tailstock die holders. I've just completed another article for Engineering in Miniature magazine and I show how to make a tap guide. In one of the future articles I hope to include how to make these die holder adapters. I found a piece of brass in my box of very small pieces of brass. This is only really a chucking piece but it's fine for this job. I'm making the piston. First of all I need to make the entire piece of metal smaller. Rather than taking a lot of cuts across the front of the work to reduce the size of the piece of metal, you've seen how I've just done it. I nibble away at it until I get it much smaller, then I take a final facing cut. Then I drill a hole one eighth of an inch in diameter in the centre of the piece of brass and thread it 4BA. To lessen the risk of breaking the tap, I'm threading the brass by hand. And now I'm going to fit the piston rod into the piston blank and I'm using some Loctite 603 to permanently lock it in place. I fit the piston rod into the tailstock chuck, making sure it's tight, I then engage the piston rod with the piston blank and rotate the main chuck and it all screws together just like this. I need this to be tight and fitted all the way in. Here's the piston rod blank on the piston rod and I'm now going to reverse the part in the chuck. I've put a small washer on first to just keep the brass away from the chuck jaws because when I turn the outer diameter I need some clearance between the work and the chuck jaws. This small gap is just enough to allow the tool not to touch the chuck jaws when I get to the end of the travel when I turn the outside diameter. First of all I'm thinning down the part and now it's time to turn the outside diameter, being very careful not to take too heavy a cut. If you look at the width of the digital caliper you'll see that I've got quite a way to go yet. I'm checking frequently with the caliper, not that I need to because it's nowhere near yet, but I'm just doing it so that any beginners viewing this will see the importance of checking the size, because don't forget you can remove the metal but it's very difficult to put it back. I have a deep distrust of digital calipers, so apart from using the caliper I'm also offering the cylinder up to the piston blank. That's a bit mad really, but I turn madness into an art form now and again. This piston is going to be fitted with a silicone o-ring so it needs to be a few thou under the diameter of the cylinder. By a few I don't mean a lot, I mean maybe two or three. Here I'm cutting the groove. Now cutting the groove is a bit of a black art. It's a good idea to study the data sheets and get the dimensions for the grooves from a book. But as I'm not a proper engineer I tend to do it by eye and nothing's fallen apart yet that I've made so I think it's quite a good way of doing it. When you cut the groove in a piston like this the o-ring needs to not be too tight to fit in the piston itself and it doesn't want to be too tight to fit in the bore either. It doesn't need much side float it needs to be an easy fit but the groove itself must be machined to the correct depth. There must be some clearance between the inner diameter of the piston ring and the groove. The last thing you want is the groove to not be deep enough and put some positive pressure on the piston ring which in turn puts positive pressure on the wall of the cylinder and the piston ring will wear out very quickly. In case you're wondering what I'm doing at the moment I'm drilling two holes in the end of the piston. 
It would have been more accurate to use a rotary table for this, but the setup time prevents me from doing it. By the time I thought about setting up the rotary table, I can have the job finished by using the drilling machine. I used a centre drill first and then a slightly larger drill to drill part of the way through the piston. You may be wondering why I've left the piston ring in place while I'm doing this, and it's just to wind up the experts. It seems to be a trend to watch my videos and see me making things, and then before watching the complete video, some people message me and ask me a question that's covered in detail later on in the video. But usually it's just some sad keyboard warrior telling me how to do it. By the way, I removed the piston ring, cleaned it, re-oiled it and refitted it. And why did I drill the two holes in the piston? And the answer is so I can use a tool like this to tighten the piston into the crosshead. It's time to do a little bit of measuring to see what the travel of the crosshead is going to be like. Up to a point I'm using guesswork on this engine. I do have a complete engine but it belongs to a customer so I'm not going to dismantle that to copy it. Casting my experienced eye over the job, I think it's going to be somewhere near. I still need to machine the crosshead but that's in another video. And that's about it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.